Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 43. Um, It is Wednesday night. Um, It was a really pretty decent day today. A few calls, um, still picking up. Uh, A lot of window shopping still for the summer. Uh, That's expected, and that's actually cool because I am trying to stay in a little longer. I got a few things I have to do. We have this weekend in, at the Selen Arena in Fresno, California. Um, you can go to my page on Facebook and check out the information or message me if you have to or whatever if you need more information. So, uh, Or you can just contact the Selen uh, Arena, find out what's playing for this weekend. So that will be February 15th. So we're not doing the 14th. There is a show in El Paso, Texas, I think. Was it Houston? I think it's El Paso. There's one on the 14th with the same company. We're not on that one. We're doing the next day, which is the Valentine's Love Jam. Um, I'm glad. Um, uh, we're doing Saturday. Not Friday. Not for this week. Uh, I don't mind doing Fridays and coming back and having the weekend off, but I needed to stay home Friday. I have things to do. So, uh, Other than that, everything else is good. Today was um, a different day. Um, I had to actually do some some work um, on my house. And now, let me try to make this shit clear, as clear as possible, people. Okay, I don't fix shit. Let's be real. I don't, I don't, I don't mess with any of that stuff. I, if you ever want to torture me, if you want to make my life miserable, tell me to paint something. I hate to paint. I don't know what it is. I've approached painting in the past where I've looked at a room, I said to myself, you know what? I'm gonna tackle this, all the furniture's out, drop cloths are down, I'm gonna mix this, I'm gonna make sure I don't have a, I don't get a drop on the floor or a drop on me. I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna make this the best paint job I possibly can. And trust me when I tell you I'm being real sincere. In a matter of about 10 to 15 minutes, I don't know how it happens. But somehow, someway, paint always ends up on my elbow. It's usually my left elbow. I don't know how this happens. And how do I figure this out? Because I touch it. Now I have paint on my right hand okay now, I know how it got on my right hand but I don't know how it got on my left elbow but but I now know how it gets on my forehead and then it gets on my ear and then it gets on my beard and then it gets on my shirt next thing you know I'm just wiping my hands everywhere I, 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 I painted 10, maybe 15 minutes, and now I look like I've been painting for five days. I don't know what it is, people. Anybody who is out there who's handy, contractors, painters, I guarantee you probably know what I'm doing wrong. There's something that I'm doing wrong. I don't know what it is, um, <clears throat> but I hate painting. But now, today I didn't paint. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> today I didn't paint. All right, this is how this happened. In my master bathroom, I have a shower that I usually use, garden tub that Angel uses, okay? Had a small leak coming out of the faucet. Now, I have a nephew who's a plumber. The problem is he just had surgery done on his shoulder. So he's he can't do anything. So... I went on YouTube, 
and I searched how to fix, it was a Delta faucet, which anybody who knows is the knob. I hate those damn knobs. You you know, you got to lift the knob up and turn it to the right or the left, whatever. I can't stand them things. I think they're stupid. I like a regular handle, like a lever, you know? Those balls are annoying. Anyway, mine was leaking. And so I said, well, honestly, how hard can this be to change this? Well, people... That shit was hard, man. I looked at about five, six videos. I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. Those balls, those Delta ones, are it's a, it's a weird contraption inside of there. Inside those balls, it is a, because it has to be able to move without water dripping. It's crazy. So anyway, to make the story shorter... Me trying to fix it, I made it worse. I'm talking about worse to the point where water shot out like you see in them cartoons. I'm not joking you. I'm talking about water shooting straight out and hitting the other side of the tub, the shower. Good thing it was hitting the other wall. Good thing the shower wasn't facing like out the door. It wasn't. It was facing the other way. Now... Why? How my how my house has only one shut off valve beats me. I don't know. I never even realized it before. My nephew told me told me this one time before. I didn't pay it no mind. So I need to find another place where I can put a shot another another uh, emergency uh, cut off for the water. But right now the main cut off is in the garage. You go in there, you cut that off, and it shuts off now all the water in the entire house. That shit makes no sense, man. Really, but. That's what it is. We're only the second tenants in this uh, in this house. We bought this from the original own, owners. So, <clears throat> and I think they only had it since, I think, 2000. So, the house isn't all that old. And we bought it in 2007. So, they only had it for like seven years. And now, we had it. And, and it was supposed to be a, a one-stop. Like, we're supposed to just... We came to North Carolina... We found a home. We we found, we wanted something that was a no-brainer. We didn't want to find anything that we had to investigate the land or try to see what the value would be. We found a regular cookie cutter inside a very uh, modest uh, subdivision. I love it, though. We paid total cash, 100% for the house. We've had it all these years already, so it more than paid itself off already. Um, and the value has gone up as is without doing like major work. We've done like little maintenance work. We haven't done anything major here yet because we never thought we were going to stay here this long. This was only supposed to be the spot where we stayed, right? So since I I paid cash, that's like putting the money in the bank and now we don't have to pay no rent or anything like that. So we're supposed to stay maybe a year and during that time we would get familiar with the neighborhood and then go and look for other homes to buy, which we did. We bought five homes in this neighborhood But none of them we wanted to live in. We just wanted to rent them out. We got great deals and they were all paid for in cash. So so we started doing that. Finally, uh, we found a house that we wanted, um, but we got to it too too late and um, they sold it. It was a big, it was a nice size, you know. Uh, People would think we were downsizing because Erica's gone now, Adam's out the house, but the grandkids are here all the time and Santana's here. So in, in fact, it seems like we need a bigger house than a smaller one. Before we only had two kids, now we got four, you know? So, <clears throat> um, but anyway, so when I took the piece off, man, that water just started flying across. So I came into the garage, turned off the, 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 the main valve. Um, went back in, took pictures, sent it to my nephew. And his response, his reply was WTF. <laughs> so um, he was like, how the hell did you do that? I said, well, I was trying to take off a little clamp that was on there, but I didn't realize that I was bending the, like one of the pipes. And since they were copper, they actually, it just snapped. It just like came right off. It was the weirdest thing. And so anyway... Um, this was, uh, so anyway, we kind of, we left it like that for a minute. We turned off the water. Um, I had to kind of get creative. Finally, Eddie came over, helped me out. He just claimed he couldn't do much, but he cut the two lines for now, the hot and cold water. He capped them. 
so that way we can at least run the water and that stuff wouldn't be all over the place. So, but anyway, so today, now we were hoping that he would get better. He could do some work. He really couldn't. And, you know, I didn't want to get another plumber. It wasn't about the money, but, you know, him I trust. That's my nephew. Um, and I knew it was a major job. So I had him come over and just kind of help me, kind of just uh, direct me on what to do. And let me tell you something, man. Mad props to plumbers. I don't know how you guys do it, man. I don't know how you get your hands into these little corners, man, to even turn a knob. I don't, I don't get this, man. That's some crazy stuff. But anyway, it took us some time. We spent a little bit of time in, uh, in, uh, in Lowe's and picked up everything we needed. And then I had to get some sheetrock. Now, I have a Jeep. Now, I used to always have exteriors that had um, roof racks. This time, I don't have roof racks on my Jeep. So, of course, I bring the sheetrock and they one of the waterproof pieces. So I brought it, brought it over, and I knew it wasn't going to fit. So, I had a, a utility knife and my... Um, and my ruler, my big uh, stainless steel ruler, and I cut it into three sections, put it in the back seat. So, brought him back over uh, because we had to do some patching. So, he had me uh, do the patching, uh, do the cleanup. I was basically his laborer, <laughs> you know. But um, uh, it came out really good. It looks really, really good. But what was so crazy is that when he left, I was so damn tired, man. Now, this is weird. I mean, I was real. I actually, I never take a nap, man. I had to lay down for a little bit. I just did not feel good. And then I, I've crashed. I want to fall asleep. And uh, I don't nap, man. I don't like to nap because, I don't know. I just don't like to nap. I'd rather just try to get to bed early. I don't want to nap. So, but man, you know, uh, I know I went up onto a ladder, small ladder, a few times up and down. You know, these are things that I'm not used to doing. I'm not accustomed to doing. It's a little scary. I'll tell you that, man. Yeah, I was always an active dude. Um, I played racquetball and played paintball and I played football and, and I used to love to run and I boxed. So I was always athletic. I was always moving, but... Since I moved here, it's like you freaking drive to the mailbox. It's like you don't walk anywhere over here. Like you leave my subdivision right off the right right away. You're, you're in the highway. There's nowhere to walk. You you have to drive. You know. Now you can walk to the track and walk there, but it's like kind of weird, man. It's like oh, what? that's kind of dumb, <laughs> you know. So or we'll walk around the neighborhood, but it's so boring, you know. Um, but. Yeah, I was just, I felt, you know, and I just, it bothered me all day because I was like, man, this isn't good, man. It's like, I did this, you know, manual labor, something that I never do. Like, people got real jobs, you know. I've been an agent. I work on a computer, man, or on the phone. And you talk about, you know, being stagnant, people being, what they call it when you're, um, when you don't move too much. Oh, my God. Stationary, sedentary, sedentary, something like that. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, sedacious. I forgot. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the word. But anyway, that's what my life is about. And that's why I gained so much weight, you know. Not my diet. I haven't even eaten. Well, it's late. I shouldn't even say I didn't eat dinner. It's true. I didn't. It's 11 p.m. But um, I'll probably just eat a little snack and go to bed. But um yeah, it's, you know, it's crazy. I don't walk around with donuts and soda in my pocket all day, but I gained this weight. But it's because, I, you know, and then when I go and do just a little stupid work like this, I mean, I look at people that do like 10 of these a day. I'm crying because I did one and I didn't even do it all on my own, you know. Uh, but even the up and down and putting the sheet rocking and cutting it and bringing outside and cutting it. Man, I was like, what the hell? It's like, you know, it's, it's almost like torturous to me. You know, and, and it's not because I'm lazy because I work a lot, you know, um, I work more than the average person. It's just my work doesn't entail physical freaking movement, <laughs> you know, it basically, you know, it, it, it's all brain work. It's all, you know, trying to, you know, figure out being creative really is the key to my, you know, the key to what I do. You know, and then of course selling. I sell a lot. I sell artists, and I sell T-shirts, and I sell books, and so I sell a lot. You know, so so now I had to actually move and go up and down a little. St- and when I say up and down a ladder, listen, 
I ain't, I ain't going to front. I'm not talking about, I have a big 32-foot ladder. No. No, that's not the one we used. I'm talking about my, my step stool. It has three freaking steps. I went up and down that thing one, two, I say eight times. Went up, tried to put a piece of sheetrock. This is over the tub where the piping comes down. Didn't fit. Came back down. Scraped it. Went back up. It didn't fit. Came back down. Scraped it. Went back up. Didn't fit. Came back down. Got my rubber hammer. Went back up. Pounded the corners. Got it in. <laughs> yeah, they screwed it in. They held the freaking heavy ass drill. Screwed them in. <laughs> you know? But man, when I was there, and then I wanted to clean up. Like, I can't do something. I can't do something that I don't like and then come back to it. If I'm going to do something that I don't like, I have to finish it. I have to get it done because I get scared that I won't go back. I just, so, you know, when I was done, I said, and it was garbage day, so I had to make sure garbage was out and I had to clean up all that freaking stuff from the, from the sheetrock and, oh man, and just up and down, up and down. Now when I get back, I'll tape it and, and putty it. I can't do that now. I don't want to get into that because again, that's going to take me some time and I really don't have the time. Um, and I'd rather wait till we get back so that way if we need to, you know, we can shower early, I could do that and then we can leave for the day to dry to the evening. So that's my intentions. But yeah, man, that, that physical thing um, <clears throat> really was never me. Um, and I remember coming out of prison and thinking to myself and saying, man, what am I going to do when I get out? Like, I was already dealing with the music, but it was hard to plan with that. It was hard to say, well, that's what I'm going to do full time. That's how I'm going to pay my bills and stuff. It was hard. That was like, that's everybody's dream. Um, so I didn't know how possible it was. Even though I was in the business already, um, I wasn't making enough to, uh, to, um, you know, su- support myself, let alone a family, you know. Before I went away, I didn't have a family, just so you guys know. I'm talking about, you know, wife and kids or grandkids. It's just me and my mom. But um, but that stuff always seemed really, really torturous to me. I give it up, man, to anybody who does any kind of manual labor, especially if you're, you're heading, uh, you're more towards my age, you're going into your 50s maybe. And I'm like, wow, you know. But, you know, they, they were in good health, man. They... They could tie their shoes without freaking losing breath, you know? Uh, that's a beautiful thing. You know, me, I wasn't always a big boy. I remember, as, in fact, I think I was the most I ever weighed. I said when I was 24, the most I came up, I came out at 180. That was like my, like, oh, wow, 180. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting big, you know, I'm six feet tall. But not that tall compared to today's standards. You know, back in the 70s, I was pretty tall, but... um. Uh, right now, I think the average height is like 6'3". You know, I know my my son is 6'3". So, a lot of these kids that I know, my nephews and stuff, they're all like tall. They're all over 6 feet, you know. So, <clears throat> I'm compared, I'm, I'm basically considered a shorty, you know. But, um, but yeah, man, so anyway. Yeah, so that's, that's what went on today. Um, yeah, you know, anything in here, man... You know, and everything, nothing's really difficult. It's like, I got a couple of shorts and a couple of rooms. I don't use those lights, but, you know, it kind of sucks to have shorts on them. So I would like just to fix them just so that I know they're fixed. And I could probably do it. I could probably take the thing out and, you know, um, and I could probably do what needs to be done. And um, But it's like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'd rather get somebody to come in here and do it themselves, you know, do it, do it for me. Because what will probably take me most of the day will take someone like 10 minutes. No, no joke. Put it this way. The first sheetrock where the fixtures were in, at the, in the tub, I actually went out to go cut a piece for another thing. By the time I came back, Eddie already had that thing cut. He had the fix, fixture holes cut. He had it popped into the space and he had it drilled in he had that done during the time that it took me to cut to be outside cutting a couple little squares for the other holes and then when he left and I had to do the other two on top it took me forever 
took me forever. I swear, altogether probably about three hours. It was just the weirdest thing. Like, I could measure the thing a hundred times, no matter what. I'm never gonna get the size right. It's either gonna be too small, it's gonna be too big, or whatever the case may be. You know, they what they say, they say um measure twice, cut once. Well, I measure shit like ten times. I still wind up cutting it eight times, <laughs> you know? So but uh yeah, so that was pretty much that was my day today. Um uh now I'm gonna come here after uh, alter some uh, contracts. Fix up a few things, um, and then call it a night, you know. So, anyway, hoping uh, you guys are having a great night. I appreciate um, everyone who's been listening in. We're at episode 43. Now, if you've been following me, you've been following me since episode one. I thank you. There's only a handful of you. I'm not front. That's fine. I'm not going to stop. Um, I got a lot to say, and I got some really cool stuff coming in. And this is the medium that I wish to share with share it with you. So um, I get up mad early. That's why a lot of times when I'm talking to you guys, I start to get a little, like, sleepy. I start to yawn. It's like it doesn't, doesn't I don't win. <laughs> so, uh, but it's cool. I'm still psyched and... That's the whole purpose of this anyway. It's called a good night freestyle and it's because we're at the end of the day. It's time, time to unwind. And maybe you guys are laying in bed kind of listening to this. That'd be kind of cool, you know. Um, just try to try to listen in and uh, kind of vibe with me, you know. So, but anyway, all right, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Don't forget to uh, like, share, subscribe. And more importantly, comment. Until tomorrow, good night, freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.